Welcome to our first screencast for YouTube on calculus. Our first calculus YouTube ever. All right. First of all, uh, this is brought to you by my uh, by CalcPage. This is my website. I'm CalcPage. Um, the uh, URL is calcpage.tripod.com. Uh, if you're interested in more videos and whatnot, we have them available on eBay under TI Calculator Active, TI Active. You just click this, and you can see all my books related to teaching with technology, mainly calculus and pre-calculus, and college algebra uh, levels. I have books of uh, questions and solutions, and I have videos, complete class videos for calculus A, B, and B, C, which is what I teach at the high school all year. So this is our first calculus class, or at least part of the first calculus class. Um, that we did this year. It's going to be a highlight. I mean, it's going to be hard to keep this to 10 minutes, so let's try. All right, I'm going to get rid of this. Um, our topic today is, whoops, yes. Our topic today, or the first day, was this, an informal definition of limits, OK? That's what we're doing. That was our first calculus topic this year on September 9th. We did some pre-calculus stuff the week before. Uh, algebra, trig stuff, I'll skip that for now. Again, only the highlights. You want the full videos, you got to go to uh, calcpage.chartbot.com. Um, I also have a blog on there, you might have noticed, about teaching with technology if you're interested. So let's get started. Kindly consider the following limit. What if I want the limit as x approaches, um, let's say, negative 3 of x plus 4. What is that? Well, I call this a plug-in limit because this is a polynomial. And polynomials are defined for all real numbers. They're continuous and differentiable everywhere. We'll get to that. But as a result, you simply plug in uh, into x the value you're interested in, and you get an answer. You're done. OK? What if I said the limit as x approaches negative 3 of 4? Well, 4 is a constant. Well, how do you graph that? If you graph y equals 4, you get a horizontal line, right? So no matter what the x value is, y is always 4, so the limit is 4. What if I said find the limit as x approaches um, 1 for 2x squared? Again, this is a well-behaved function. Its uh, domain is all real numbers. It's continuous and differentiable everywhere. All polynomials are. So simply plug in 1, and you're done. So uh, I know that the limit of uh, the limit of four as x approaches negative two is four, negative three is four. I know that the limit of x plus four is the sum of the limit at x and at four. What if I change this question a little bit? What if I said, okay, what's the limit at negative three for this polynomial here? Plus x plus four. It's the limit as x approaches negative 3 for 4, which is the constant 4, plus the limit as x approaches negative 3 of x, which is negative 3, plus the limit as x approaches negative 3 of 2x squared. It's, again, it's a plug-in limit, so that would be 9 times 2 is 18 plus uh, 1, right? Wasn't it 1? So you get 19, OK? There you go. Now, graphically, what does that mean? Take a look at our uh, t89. Let's say I want to graph this one. So I'm back here. I'm going to go turn them on and say y equals, diamond F1 is y equals, x plus 4. Enter. And then I'm going to do a zoom 4. Zoom 4 is nice because it's a friendly window. It's uh, easy to trace. When you trace, <clears throat> you have uh, predictable values for x and y. It goes by 0.1 for x. And the y depends on the function. So it's, that's not that predictable, I guess. And it's also a square window, not only friendly, but square. A square window circles look like circles. They're not squashed ellipses. Uh, line with a 45 degree slope looks like it has a 45 degree slope, and so forth. OK? So this is a nice window. Now, I wanted the limit at, negative, at x equals negative 3. Well, look what happens. As x approaches negative 3 from the right, y is approaching 0 from, a, uh, from above. Wait. Did I enter this right? Negative 3. Hang on, back up. x plus 4. If I plug in negative 3, I better get 1, right? Hmm. What happened there? 
Where am I in X? Trace. Oh, I'm past angle 3. I'm sorry. Okay, let's go over here. As I approach X equals negative 3 from the left, the Y values are approaching X equals, uh, sorry, Y equals 1 from the right. There it goes. X equals negative 3 almost. Y equals 1 almost. There it goes. And, in fact, the function value is, exists there, so that's not a big deal. What if I approach from the right? The limit as x approaches from the right, as x gets smaller and smaller, closer and closer to negative 3, y is getting clo approaching from above. It's approaching 1 from above. Okay? So what can we say? Well, we're saying that the limit exists if it's the same on the left and the right. So let me write that down. Okay? The limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left is 1. The limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right is 1. So the limit at negative 3 is 1. All right, so that's the existence of the limit. The limit has to be the same on the left and the right. They have to match. Right? It has to exist on the left, has to exist on the right. They have to match, and then that's the limit. Okay, very good. Um, that's already six minutes in, huh? Okay, let's try one that's not so obvious, maybe. We're going to sneak that in before the 10-minute mark on YouTube. Um, let's see, next page. Consider the following limit. What if I want the limit as x approaches negative 2 for x squared plus 2x plus 4? Well, that's a plug limit. That's not a problem, right? But that's not what I wanted over x plus 2. This is a problem because if you plug in negative 2, you get 0 in the denominator and this fraction would be undefined. So I, it, the function is not defined there, but does the limit exist? Well, I don't know. It would be nice if this factored out. What does x plus 2 go into x squared plus 2x plus 4? I don't think it goes evenly. How do you factor x squared plus 2x plus 4? What multiplies to 4, adds to 2? I can't think of some nice integers for that. So I'm going to divide this out. Remember, factoring is dividing. I'm going to divide this out and see what happens when I take out x plus 2. I'm going to factor out x plus 2 by dividing. I'm not going to get a nice factor. It's going to be a mess. Let's see. x into x squared goes x. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. Remember that dividing is fast subtracting, so we're going to add the opposite, and this canceled out. Now, x doesn't go into 4, so that's a remainder. So guess what you get? The limit as x approaches negative 2 of x plus the remainder, which was 4, over x plus 2. Okay? So, what does that mean? Well, that means as x gets uh, closer and closer to negative 2, we're going to have some problems. Probably a vertical asymptote. Okay? Um, and, but if x gets huge, what if x gets humongous? Like 100, 1,000, a million, a billion. This term becomes insignificant. It becomes close and closer to zero, and, it, and the sum x more like just the line y equals x. Okay, so the limit doesn't exist uh, at negative two, but the line, but the curve has a slanted asymptote and a vertical asymptote. Let's see what that looks like. Let's go back to. Let's see. Whoops, I need a pointer. Let's go back to my. Calculator. Where did my calculator go? My calculator's gone. I'm sorry. There it is. So let's just graph that. Okay, we're going to graph this. See what it looks like. So let's change that, and it's going to be quantity. Put in parentheses the numerator. Right, x squared plus two x plus four. Close the numerator. Divided by the quantity, x plus two. And now about a zoom four. And let's see what happens. Well, as x approaches negative two from the right, the y values are getting crazy. They're probably going to a positive infinity. But as x approaches positive infinity, the y values are looking more like a, the line y equals x over here. Let's zoom out. Let's see, zoom out a little bit. Let's see what happens from the origin. So we can see a little bit more. See, it's almost like the line y equals x, right? But as, as x approaches zero from, uh, sorry, negative two from the right, we go to positive infinity. As x approaches negative two from the left, the y values go to negative infinity. So 
first of all, the limit on the right doesn't exist, the limit on the left doesn't exist, and they don't even match. So the limit of negative 2 does not exist. Okay? But you do see this vertical asymptote, and you do see this slanted asymptote. Alrighty, that's it for today. Let's see. How do I get back to my YouTube thing? I'm sorry, it went away. There it goes. All right, I'm done for today. Thank you.